Welcome to the Sun River Angler's Fly Tying Corner, where each month we bring you a new fly pattern to give a try to on our Central Oregon lakes and rivers. In addition to showing you how to tie each pattern, I'll feature fishing technique tips and tricks, and I'll cover some of the entomology behind each pattern to help gain a better understanding of the bugs that we're trying to imitate. I have field tested each of the patterns that I feature each month to make sure that they catch fish. I'll cover tying instructions for the fly as well as materials to help you be able to recreate these patterns on your own vise. For this month's pattern, I'm going to tie Denny Stillwater Nymph. This is an excellent pattern for fishing many of our lakes here in Central Oregon and throughout the western United States. Uh, it's an excellent imitation for damsels, um, but also can be used to imitate a number of other patterns. I recently got a Denny Records signature um, fly rod. It's a six weight from Snowbee USA. And so in honor of this, I took that rod out and I cast one of Denny's um, Stillwater Nymphs up on Crane Prairie during a great damsel hatch uh, recently. And, and the first fish on this rod was a nice 20 inch rainbow trout. So I know the fly works and I know the rod works. So give this pattern a try on your next Stillwater adventure. Let's quickly review the materials for this fly. As I tie the pattern, I'll cover each material in greater detail so you can see what I chose and why I chose it for this pattern. So let's start tying the Denny's Stillwater Nymph and let me introduce the first three materials for this pattern. For a hook, I'm using a Firehole 718 in size 14. This is a competition barbless hook. It's a slightly curved hook and it's got a wide gape which is one of the reasons I really like it for uh, fishing these smaller sizes uh, for large trout. For the thread I'm using an, an Ultra 140 denier thread and this is in an olive brown. For a little weight on this fly I'm going to add about five to six turns of a non-toxic -to uh, wire and this is 0.015. Uh, adding weight is optional. You can you can certainly leave that off it's, if it's your preference. So I'm going to begin by tying in my non-toxic wire and I'll go ahead and trim the tabs off. And then I'm going to wind some thread right in front of that lead wire to secure it, leaving ample room for the head. And I'll wrap over the lead wire and wrap behind it to secure it in place. For the tail and the wing case over the body of this fly, I'm using an olive marabou. So I've selected out a bunch of marabou and I've clipped off probably a section that's maybe three quarters of an inch and then I've taken my fingernails and evened up the tips and I'll clip this uh, to the right length and I'll tie it in at the tail set position right behind that lead wire. For the rib on this pattern I've used ultra wire in small and the color is copper brown, which is not that important. This is really to add some durability and stability to the pattern along with a slight amount of rib. So I'm going to go ahead and tie in my ribbing and I'll um, wind that back to the tail set position. 
and then I'm going to follow that up by gathering a subsequent tuft of marabou, about the same amount as I used in the tail. And I'll clip off the tips and I'm going to tie this in right again behind the lead and back to the tail set position. This will become my wing case. For the dubbing, I'm using Fly Fish Foods Bruiser Blend Junior. And this is a brown olive. You can also use, um, you can wind the marabou. Uh, but I find a dubbing mix is a little more durable on this pattern. So I've used this Bruiser Blend Junior. So I'm going to um, pinch just a little bit of the Bruiser Blend on the thread. Then I'll capture just a few fibers on the hook and then I'll spin them around the thread to create a nice dubbing noodle. And I'll wind that all the way up to the end of the, the uh, non-toxic wire to create the body on this fly. For the hackle, I'm using a whiting dry fly saddle in a grizzly dyed orange. This is a key part to this pattern as the color really imparts uh, life and kind of that damsel color that is so common in our western um, still waters. So I've stripped off a few barbs and I'm going to tie this in right at the head position and I'll wrap one wrap right at the head and then I'm going to um, palmer this all the way back to the tail set position in fairly widely spaced wraps. And so once I get back there, I'll capture that hackle with my wire that I reserved earlier, and then I'll um, weave that wire through the hackle so as not to mat down any of the barbs all the way up to the eye position and I'll tie that off and clip off the excess. So the last step in this fly is to gently um, part the hackle on the top of the pattern. I just use my thumb and forefinger to squeeze on it and give a place for that marabou to lay. And then I'll pull that marabou that I reserved earlier all the way up to the head position over the um, wing case area of this pattern. And I'll tie that off and give some wraps in front of it and clip off the excess. So from here, I'll drop into a whip finish, and I'll use the whip finish to clean up the head a little bit. I typically don't use glue on my head, so I'll, I'll use two whip finishes instead, and they never come apart. So let me rotate the vise so you can see all sides of Denny's Stillwater Nymph. Give this pattern a try. I think you'll like it. So that has been your Sun River Anglers Fly Tying Corner for this month. I hope you'll give Denny's Stillwater Nymph a try up on Crane Prairie or whatever is your favorite lake. Hey, and check out that new Denny Rickards signature Snow Bee Rod as well. I've been really pleased with the way it casts and also handles big fish. If you like what you see, please subscribe to this page. Thanks for watching.